Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Thank you guys all so much for joining me today. For today's video, I do have this rechargeable nail drill. This is a 35,000 RPM nail file, nail e-file. Here's how this looks. The packaging is very simple. Let's go ahead and open it up. So upon opening this up, we get this beautiful little packaging. I love how everything looks. It's super neat. Here we have their user manual. The brand is Su Surian. Surian. I don't know how I would pronounce this. Let me know if you guys know how to pronounce this because I honestly don't even know how. So here we have some important safeguards. Check before using. We have notes for usage. Inquiry items included features just stuff like that the usual on the back it does show a little bit more of how to use it any tips and any tricks or anything like that so yeah here's how that looks the first item we have here is this cube here to plug it in and charge our e-file most e-files never include this you know never include the block and i always have to you know try to like take some blocks from like my i don't know what you guys call this i usually call this a cube or a block but i usually take them from like my phone or anything like that and i use it for like my nail stuff to charge them and all of that stuff so i love that this one actually includes this so i actually have one you know i don't have to take it away from my other stuff next we have the e-file itself let's go ahead and remove it and so here's how it looks. It's this gorgeous rose gold shimmery color. It's super cute and very unique. I really love it. It's super smooth and glossy. I really love the touch of it. This is also plastic as well. So it's not super heavy. It's a very, very lightweight. Here's how this looks. So here we have the USB cord to plug it in and also charge it as well. So I really love that. Here's how this looks. So in here we have our handpiece. It's metallic, metal, you know. It's super lightweight upon like just going ahead and grabbing it. It's very, very lightweight. Probably the most lightweight e-file that I currently have. Most hand pieces are super heavy. This one's super lightweight, like right away. I honestly barely even feel like I'm holding anything. It, it feels like the, um, how do you call it, weight of a pencil. It's super lightweight, really love that. I love that it includes this little design here so I'm able to have an easier grip when using my e-file. Here's how this looks. Go ahead and turn it this way and we're able to unlock our handpiece for our e bit and then we plug place it back. Then we place it back in here and then we're able to lock it in place. Here's how this looks. And the cord is like this, so you're able to use it a little bit of farther distance like that also always make sure to not move this part of your hand piece a lot i had that with my other if i accidentally moved it a lot i just one day decided to i don't know move mess with it and it stopped working so yeah so always make sure you take care of your items so they can last you longer so here we have this little holder for our hand piece you're just gonna go ahead and place this on your e-file and then it's just gonna hold and it's just gonna go ahead and hold your e-file in place i'm just gonna have to push this in first let me see if i can get it and just like that it is done super cute and let's just go ahead and place our hand piece inside of it just gonna place that there and we're just gonna place the plug in here and just like so look at how beautiful this e-file looks I really love it. It's just super cute. Lastly, here we have this gorgeous handpiece holder for our eval. It's this cute little tiny teddy bear, also rose gold with that shimmery little look. It's really, really cute. I'm super excited to go ahead and see how this looks all together. And so when you open it up, you're actually able to actually place some of your nail bits in here. I think this is a super neat thing. Look how beautiful this looks. We have some little sanding bands, our mandrel bits, and some other bits as well. I think this is super neat. It's 
super cute as well. So look how beautiful this looks. Let's go ahead and see how this looks all together. So here I'm going to go ahead and turn on our e-file. Here's how it sounds. You, we have this little LED display, which I really love. I mainly work with e-files. I have an LED display. I like it um, because I am able to know how um, fast I'm working on. And I just think it's super neat. So you're able to up the RPMs. The most that I usually work at is 12. And so here's how it sounds at 12,000 RPMs. I'm going to go ahead and click this button and this just automatically pauses our e-file. I love that. It's just super neat. I love that the buttons are just right here and there. So when you're working with it, you're able to easily, this is the way I usually work. And I'm able to easily, you know, just use my pinky or my other finger and just stop it right away. Usually I would have to, you know, the e-file I normally use has like a little button here that I have to turn. And it's just so much work, honestly. So I think just being able to just stop it here and there is just going to be like super fast. And just gonna save me overall some time and hassle. Here you're able to turn it the other way, counterclockwise, I believe. And here it's now in forward. Let's go ahead and click this button. And then we're able to, you know, just work in that direction like this. And so here's where we're able to recharge our e file super neat i think it stays up until let me see so the charge time is 2.5 hours so two and a half hours i believe and the maximum time you can use the e-file is eight hours so i think that's pretty great let me know what you guys think i'm gonna go ahead and proceed on to the set and then later on i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how this works later on so for today's set i'm gonna be doing an xl polycho squared now set we're going to be using these XL C-curve um, square nut tips. These are from AliExpress. Here's how they look. They're very wide, which I don't like, and they have a very strong C-curve. Here's how it looks. And I also do not like that either. So here's how they look. And I went ahead and chose out my sizing for each and every single nail. And now using the straight edge nail clipper, I'm going to go ahead and just taper the sides a little bit more and just kind of remove that strong C-curve it has. So I'm just going to go ahead and just trim the little ends here, remove a little bit of each end. I'm going to also be doing this to each and every single nail tip before I actually add them onto my nail. I just think it's just much more easier this way. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and continue doing this. Now I'm going to go ahead and just place it onto the nail that it goes. And if I like how it looks, it looks perfect. I like how tapered it is. Then I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Now to adhere these nail tips, I'm going to be using a gel base coat. And then I'm going to go ahead and just place them on and cure this under the lamp. I'm going to continue and do that so you turn every single nail. I also do want to mention that I do have a peel-out base coat underneath. I'm using a Nail Reserves peel-out base. It's a gel um, peel-out base coat. So I really love that and I'm kind of just testing out how it works. Um, but yeah, here's how it looks. I went ahead and adhere each and every single one of them. Here's how all of the nail tips look glued on. Now I'm going to go ahead and cure this in my lamp for about 60 seconds. And so here's how they look. They're super long and I didn't really want to do super long nails. I kind of wanted to do them a little bit long but not like you know extra long so i'm gonna go ahead and just cut them right about here so i went ahead and marked them all up with a little sharpie that i had there and now using my nail clipper i'm gonna go ahead and just all trim them down to the same length so once all of the nail tips are the same length this is how they all look and now we're ready to start on our application but I did go ahead and just remove the shine from the nail tips and here's how they look after. And now we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with the color SY10. This is by Savlan. For my slip solution, I'm going to be using 91 isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to be using my Model 1's poly gel brush. Here's how it looks. It has the brush here and then the spatula on the other end. I'm going to start off by applying a very thin layer of my base coat and curing this for 30 seconds in my little lamp here. 
Before I proceed to this set, I do want to go ahead and give credit to Rizzo underscore nose. I saw her do this set on TikTok and I really love this. I want to go ahead and recreate it. I'm going to go ahead and go in and just place a little bit of some pole gel onto my nail bed here. Then I'm going to go ahead and just gently push that back towards the right side while making sure that I fill that in. I'm creating my little smile line here. Then now I'm going to go ahead and just gently push that back towards the cuticle area once I have that done. Then I'm going to go ahead and gently push the pole gel towards the left side while making sure that I fill that gap there very well. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of like just create my beautiful smile line. I'm pushing the pole gel a little bit forward where I want my smile line to be, the length of it. Then I'm just going to go ahead and sculpt that out, round that out, make that crisp almond shape that I like for my smile line. Then I'm going to go ahead and cure this for 30 seconds in my lap. I'm going to go in with a little bit more Poggio just so I can get that very pigmented layer. And I'm just going in and just basically covering the entire um, smile that I created. Then I'm going to go in and cure this for 30 seconds in my lamp. So here's how my smile looks and here's how the side profile looks as well super pretty you guys can also go ahead and follow it if you didn't really like how it came out i know a lot of people struggle with you know creating the smile and just like this so you can also follow it to perfection if you'd like i personally don't like to do that so here's how it looks now i'm gonna go in with these gorgeous green dried flowers we have some petals just a bunch of everything i'm gonna be using savaland's 07 clear poly gel and savaland sy10 light green poly gel color i'm just gonna grab a little bit and place it on my natural nail then I'm going to grab some of that clear and place it at the free edge of my nail tip. So for this nail, we're going to go ahead and be creating an ombre nail. I honestly didn't really work on doing an ombre nail. I mainly just let it, you know, do whatever it wants. Because either way, like towards the middle of me doing this ombre, I realized like the flowers are mainly going to be covering it. So it doesn't really have to be perfect ombre and I don't have to stress about it being perfect. So I ended up just leaving it like whatever. I really didn't work too hard to ombre this out. But yeah, I'm here, I'm just going ahead and gently pushing the poggio towards the middle of the nail where I want my ombre um, effect to go. I had a little bit too much of the clear, so I did go ahead and remove that. Then again, I'm just going to go ahead and gently push that towards the middle of the nail. So we can get sort of like an ombre look. Like I said, I really wasn't really focusing on making it look too much like an ombre because either way, it's going to get covered. So you don't even probably have to do an ombre. But yeah, here I'm just going ahead and gently pulling that green towards the clear to create that beautiful ombre effect. Just like so. And also do want to mention, do not cure it. Um, once you have your ombre effect, I'm going to be using that to adhere the dried flower straight onto the poly gel here that isn't cured. Here's how it looks. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, I realized I'm gonna, it's going to get covered, so it doesn't have to really be perfect. So yeah, I'm just going ahead and doing that, cleaning up my sidewalks to make sure I don't lose my shape. And then now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and just grab my dried flowers and just place it onto the nail, just like so. Once you have all your dried flowers onto your nail, go ahead and cure that for 30 seconds and here's how they look after. I went ahead and made sure that they're very flat. Now using my Savaland Clear Pole Gel, I'm going to go ahead and just encapsulate this. I didn't like the Savaland Clear um, Pole Gel consistency. It was a little bit too sticky and the consistency on it was just horrible. So I did go ahead and just encapsulate this first because I don't want to let the Pole Gel go to waste. But after you guys will see later on that to build my apex for this now i did go ahead and just i think i believe i used etsy's clear poly gel after to also again encapsulate this now and build the apex Thank you. 
Once I've encapsulated that, now I'm gonna go ahead and cure this for 30 seconds in my lap. I'm going in with a thin coat of my base coat again, grabbing more poly gel. I'm gonna place it onto my natural nail only. Then I'm gently gonna go ahead and use my poly gel brush to go ahead and just push that back gently towards the cuticle area. Once I have the cuticle area filled up, I'm gonna go towards the right side wall first, making sure that I also fill that in. Then go towards the left side wall only of my natural nail first. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on my small end. I like a deep French. So I'm going to go in and just scope that out with my poly gel. Once I have it to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and cure this. And so here's how it looks. Super pretty. Now again onto this. Now I'm going to go ahead and go in with a thin coat of my base coat. Cure this for 30 seconds. We're going to go ahead and apply the poly gel directly on top of our nail. A little bit farther away from the cuticle area. Gently push this back towards the cuticle area, then I'm working onto the right side wall again as always. Then I go ahead and fill the left side wall. Now making sure that I go ahead and scoped out that poly gel, making sure that I cover the entire nail tip here. And I kind of even out that layer. And I always use my brush to go ahead and wipe always the ends of my nail tip to make sure that I maintain my shape all throughout my process. It also does help avoid a lot of filing, so I just highly recommend always wiping the ends of your nail tip. Just use that middle end of your brush just wipe it away and just it's just gonna make your life so much easier and save you a lot of time in the long run so once i have my first thin layer down i'm gonna go ahead and then cure this for 30 seconds here's how our first layer now looks now i'm gonna go in with just a little bit more polish oil just because i wanted it to be, the color to be a little bit more opaque so again i'm going in with that thin layer just making sure that I already cover that other layer that I have down. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and give this for 30 seconds. Again, always make sure you wipe the ends of your nail. Now next, we're going to go in with our Betsy Clear Poly Gel. This is a super clear poly gel, so I highly recommend it. I'm going to go ahead and just apply a little bit. I'm going to push that back towards the cuticle area, towards the side point, just kind of encapsulate this now and i'm also going in ahead and building the apex once i have that covered and i have my apex built i'm going to go ahead and cure this for 30 seconds in my lamp Now again, I'm going to grab a little bit of poly gel since now I'm going to work on my pinky nail. And I added a little bit too much later on. You guys will see that I'm going to go ahead and remove that excess. Again, we're going to create another French nail here. Same process all over again. So I'm just going to go ahead and just let you guys enjoy this with some music. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some glitter to these Frenchies here. So here's how our application looks so far. Super pretty. Let me know which nail design so far is your favorite and let me know if you guys are liking this video. So I'm gonna be using this gorgeous green glitter. It includes some hexagons, fine glitter, just a bunch of everything. And I'm gonna go in with a thin clear um, layer of poly gel. And I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this where I don't have my small line. I'm going to go in with this flat brush and we're going to go ahead and use this to place the glitter onto the poly gel. So I'm grabbing that glitter and I'm just pressing it against the poly gel. Not sprinkling it, we're pressing it against the poly gel making sure you know that it sticks so we have no loose glitter when we go in and encapsulate. So I'm just going to go ahead and press it against the clear poly gel and keep this for 30 seconds in my lamp. So once it has cured, this is how it looks after. Now onto the next. Now I think the poly gel thin layer was just a little bit too much work. So let's go ahead and save our time. And we're gonna grab a very thick base coat. This is to apply Gelix. So I'm going to apply a very thin layer. And then we're gonna go ahead and just again press the powder against that gel base coat. 
then we're gonna go ahead and then cure this for 30 seconds in our lamp and i'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys enjoy watching the process Now I'm going to go ahead and just encapsulate the glitter and then the entire nail later on as well. I only showed me doing this once just because I didn't want to bore you guys with seeing the same process all over again. But yeah, once you have that encapsulated, then go ahead and then cure this for 30 seconds in your lamp. Now we're ready to go ahead and start on our filing and e-filing process. So before I do that, we're going to go in with 70% isopropyl alcohol to remove that tacky layer so it doesn't gang up our bits and our files. So here are my nails. I did go ahead and file some already. For example, the thumb, this one's filed and buffed. This one I only filed and this one I only filed and used my e-file as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my process for the two nails. I was going to do all of my whole hand filing process, but... Usually I notice that the video ends up being 40 minutes long, so I don't want that. I'm gonna go in, file this one, and then encapsulating, I notice that I always make the nose a little bit wider, like a lot. So I do wanna go ahead and just make sure that I taper the um, shape a little bit more. I actually want them squared, not even tapered squared, I just want them to be squared. But this one looks a little bit too wide to my liking. And then I'm just gonna Go ahead and do the same. I'm gonna remove this file. I do have my nail dust collector, but I'm not gonna be turning it on because you guys are not gonna be able to hear um, me. Then you guys can't really hear how that e file is gonna be working. So, first, I'm just crisping up my shape first. Not too much either. I'm gonna let my hand file do most of the work for me today. Usually, I would go ahead and spend a lot of time doing my sidewalls and reshaping. But not today, we're going to see how our e-file works. Which I already have a few things that I do want to talk about. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go in with my e-file. So the bit that I'm going to be working with today is my 5-in-1. Obviously it's not clean just because I just did use it right now. I'm going to dust away any dust on here. And if you're working with long nails, of course your bit has to be a little bit more upper. Like this. If you're working with short nails, it doesn't have to be so high. It could probably be up to here. But we're working with a little bit longer length. So I'm going to make sure that it kind of goes a little higher. Let me see. I think this is perfect. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and turn it this way. And it's now locked. I'm going to go in and turn my e on. I don't know if I should place it here so you guys can see. Okay, I'm just gonna place it here, then place it back over there. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn it. And we're currently in reverse, and I'm gonna click here. Now it's in forward, and we're gonna go ahead and click this button to pause. And then you go ahead, and if you wanna continue, click it again. Um, here, I'm gonna turn to 7,000 RPMs. And I do want to show you guys something. It makes some weird noise. I don't know. Look. So here you guys can see that I'm basically just turning my e file at a certain angle. And we get that weird strange noise. Honestly, don't know what it could be. It has never happened to me. So I thought it was super strange. And I just thought I should inform you guys. But yeah. Let me know what you guys think about this. There is sort of a little bit of vibration. But it's not too bad. It's super lightweight, I honestly really love that. It's like not even having it. Like my hand doesn't really feel it that bad. Um, but here I'm gonna go ahead and now file. So the first thing I always start by doing is sealing the cuticle area. So what I like to do is turn my finger around and we're gonna go around the side walls just like this first. Then go around the cuticle area. 
and then we're gonna turn it and keep going. And that is our sealed cuticle going once again. Just to run the cuticle right now. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna continue and now we're gonna remove the bulk at the sides. So what I'm gonna use is this little end here. And we're gonna go ahead and place our nail like this and we're just gonna go one, two, three. Just like so. Now again here, just gonna go once, twice, three times. And that's that. Here's how our nail now looks. So much cleaner. And now we're gonna bring in our sides a little bit more. So from this side, we're gonna go in like this. So just like this, go in. I'm gonna turn, if you feel like your bit keeps stopping, that means you need to up the RPMs. And now I'm gonna go to 11 RPMs now. So just, do this. just go in, in. Here's how that looks. And now I'm gonna go and turn my EFA to reverse. Oops. I need to have a little bit more grip. So here's how that now looks. I'm gonna pause my earphone and place it on my little teddy bear stand here. It's super cute. It's actually the way around, my bad. Like this, and I'm just gonna place it there. We're gonna grab our hand file again and just taper in the sides a bit more. Now I'm gonna kind of angle my hand file and I'm actually placing it right on top of here. I notice I have a lot of bulk if you look at the side here from this angle I have a lot of bulk right about here so that is where I'm going to remove that bulk it's making our nails look a little bit side like lopsided so I'm going to go in and remove that I'm going to also go under the nail I think I'm only going to show you the process of this now because I feel like if I show the entire process of this one as well, it's just going to take a lot longer. So I don't want the video to be super long. And I'm going to give you the thoughts about my EFA so far. So far I actually like it. If you turn your nail around like this also, sorry if I flipped me off, you can see where you have the most bulk and it's usually right here where I have bulk. Look at this nail, I removed the bulk when I filed so I don't have any. Um, but yeah, same thing. I had a lot of bulk. I removed that. Here, I don't really have too much. But here, you guys can see that I have a lot of the green. Not the green, but like the clear poly gel. So what we're going to do is we need to file a little bit more inside. Inward, I mean. So just go in, file inward. I'm gonna place my bit. Did I unlock it? Yeah, I did. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn my e file in forward motion. Forward, I mean forward. Um, I always say motion, but I don't know the correct terminology right now. My brain is like not really here. I'm gonna continue. This is the bit that I'm using. It's an umbrella bit, I believe, and it's an extra fine.
So here's how the nail looks. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the nail is a little bit slanted. And that is because when I cut the tip, I noticed that it was already, you know, bad. But I don't want to file it because I was afraid it might pop off. So I left it like that and I thought maybe I'll fix it when I actually, you know, on top of my application. So I'm going to fix it now. And it's usually right here. So I'm going to have to remove that corner and just make it straighter. I'm not sure if it's fixed yet. I don't know. Looks fixed, sort of. Maybe not. Let's go ahead and just follow this. And then I'm gonna follow my side walls a bit more. I'm gonna use my metal hand fall because I wanna press up my shape now. Where is my metal? Okay, here it is. So again. So here's how that nail now looks. I really love it. I'm gonna go in and now um, remove any of that dust. I brush first. And we're gonna grab a lymph-free wipe. Place some um, slip solution or 70% um, alcohol. I don't, this is 91% and I put a little bit of water in it. So yeah. Just go in and scrub around the cuticle area. Now that we've done that, I'm going to show you next what I do. I'm going to first let the alcohol dry. Alcohol or alcohol. I don't know the correct terminology. So here's how our nail now looks. Now next, what we're going to do is grab our buffer. Um, whatever buffer you like. I'm going to be using this one here. I don't know where it's actually from. I believe it's from Double Dip Nails. And we're gonna grab some cuticle oil. Here's the cuticle oil. This is just any, I don't even know where I got this one from. I think I believe I got it a gift from Model Ones. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just place it a little bit on the nail here. Just place it on the nail. A very generous amount. Then we're gonna grab our buffer and we're just gonna buff away the nail. Buff, buff, buff. I'm gonna remove any scratches and any little lines there that we don't want and it's gonna make it super smooth. I'm trying to work really quick because I don't want this video to be long. I really don't like my videos to be super long. And so here's how that now looks. And now again, you're gonna go in with your wipey and remove all of that cuticle oil. I recommend washing your hands with dish soap, especially because it removes any oil from your um, plates when you're washing them. So it's gonna remove a lot of oil from your nose as well. Also, before prepping, I recommend doing that as well, washing your hands with dish soap. I noticed that helped tremendously. It does dry out your hands, of course, but it honestly dries out your nails too. So it's just going to help retention in the longer run. So here's how that looks. Now I just need to follow this one and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and go and then I'll be back shortly to show you guys that after. We're still going to add a little bit of bling and some other stuff that I'm going to be doing. So we're just going to go ahead and go straight right into these 3D flowers. I didn't actually end up showing the process of me after I finished filing. I have no idea why I tried finding the clips, but I guess I forgot to, um, how do you call it, record that. So we're just going to go ahead and get straight into these 3D flowers. I'm using this silicone too, and I'm also going to be using this 3D brush here that you guys see me working with. It is from the brand Aoki Tech. 
and i'm also using the pollo color i don't know the color honestly but i will be sure to leave a link down below the um, polish that i'm using is from the brand of hoo hoo um and yeah i'm just sculpting it out to create these 3d flowers and i hope you guys enjoy it um for the first part this was my first time doing these 3d flowers i was like super scared that it might not like turn out the way i wanted it to be but for the most part i really enjoyed how these turned out and i was so really proud of them and trust me i've been wanting to do a set with 3d flowers but i never had the courage to do it for some awkward reason but once i saw that i was capable of doing it i was like hmm all those sets that i've been wanting to do i'm gonna do them now um, but yeah for the most part i really had so much fun like i said just have fun with creating these three flowers take your time trust me i took like i believe i took like 30 minutes creating these flowers it was my first time so i wanted them to be really good i'm a perfectionist so i want things to come out the way i have them envisioned if not then i probably would have just removed these flowers and restarted this whole nail but for the most part i'm really proud of myself that you know i put myself out of the comfort zone to create these and i hope that you guys enjoy these i probably one day will make a video just step by step showing you guys what i did to create them because there's just a little bit more to it that i can't really explain since i sped up the video so quick um but yeah um after this i went ahead and cured these in my lamp for probably at least 30 seconds they start on very well they're still keeping on i've had these nails on for a week now and i'm just like super happy with how they turned out so i really wanted to go ahead and just keep these on nice for two weeks um, but yeah for the most part i'm using the silicone tool to create this little index in the petals now we're going to go ahead and get right into our bling i'm going to be using these rhinestones that you guys see here and to adhere these i'm just going to be using my top coat do i recommend using top coat no i recommend using actually a 3d gel or something like that and so here i'm going in with my top coat applying one very thin coat to each and every single nail on this one i'm not going to cure i'm first just going to go in and apply my rhinestones once I have my rhinestone placement done on these nails, then I'm going to go ahead and cure it for 30, 60 seconds in my lap. Here I'm applying a little bit of top coat in the middle of my petals to create, you know, that little center there with my rhinestone. And I'm just going to go ahead and place the rhinestone right in the middle, then I'm going to go ahead and cure this. Now I'm going to go ahead and just apply little dots of blobs of top coat that you're using a liner brush. I'm just going to go ahead and gently spread that around the flowers, making sure that I do not, any, I do not add any top coat on the flowers because it's just gonna ruin the texture of them so i'm just making sure that I carefully you know top coat the rest of the nail and yeah once i have that i'm gonna go ahead and cure this for 60 seconds let me know what you guys think about the set like i said i'm almost done um and i was really proud of it so i hope you guys enjoy it and so here's the final result let me know what you guys think again this is credits to rizzo underscore nails i went ahead and recreated her set i really loved it and i really wanted to go ahead and give it a try Again, thank you guys all so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate you guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video or want any other set created, let me know down below. I definitely will be down to, you know, get out of my comfort zone. I think it's probably one of the things that I need to do the most. Um, and for the EFA, honestly, like I said, I really loved it. It worked great. Super uh, lightweight. The only thing that I said that I thought was awkward or weird was that strange notes that it made. But other than that, I honestly had no issue with it and I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and please just, you know, take care and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.